Good morning guys, good morning internet, hi, hello, my name is EJ and I'm back again with another narrated art time lapse video for us to watch and dissect and you know, kind of learn a thing or two from. So yeah, um, today we're taking a look at another speed paint that I did for conceptart.org way back in 2018, so of course we're going back in time again. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so anyways, um yeah was it 2018 no i can't for the life of me remember if this was 2018 or not this could have been also 2019 maybe it is 2019 uh yeah i'm beginning to think it's more of 2019 anyways um yeah <laughs> what's really important is for me to talk about like the process and the idea and the impetus for um this particular illustration um so yeah, let's just dive into that, shall we? Okay, so the prompt for this particular uh, speed paint I'm doing is pin drops, which I remember when I first read it in the conceptart.org daily sketch group forum. Like I remember just thinking, man, this is like a hard prompt to illustrate with. Like I remember, uh, I don't know, maybe I spent like an hour uh doing google searches and whatnot just to try and get an idea of what to do because i couldn't for the life of me know how to illustrate the word pin drop <laughs> and so finally i decided to just give up and literally literally draw a pin dropping <laughs> So yeah, this is pretty much what ended up in my illustration. You can see this huge, gigantic pins like about ready to drop. Although my addition of all these characters kind of like changed the narrative of it a little bit, um, maybe, which maybe I could talk about in a second. But for now, let's proceed with what is going on with Krita and what I'm doing in, uh, the screen right now my process so um when i finally decided what i was gonna do where i was just gonna just literally draw pin dropping i decided that you know i needed a good sketch and whatnot so here i am doing a good sketch uh, i'm not really sure where i got this 50 style campy uh vehicle design it, it really reminds me of like 50 style uh design but it's really cool i love it and again, I don't know where the idea of the campers and all these characters being in there. I know I have the tendency of always wanting to put people in my scenes because putting people in the scenes kind of automatically put things into a narrative mode rather than taking the people out and then it just becomes a simple landscape scene. So in this particular illustration, I think my reasoning for putting all these people in the illustration is just simply just to add a narrative aspect to it. Now, what the narrative is, I don't really know. Like, it's kind of like interesting because I'm kind of having like a duality of of explaining what's going on in the story, which is just so funny with prompts um, and illustrations in general, you know, because... I remember when I was doing these sketch, when I was doing this sketch, all these people that I'm adding kind of reminded me of people watching NASA launches, you know, like, oh, hey, let's camp out and watch the NASA launch or something. So when I was drawing these people, that was kind of like the vibe that I was getting, like, oh, there's this really weird ph phenomenon that's going on in Sahara Desert or something, or in the America's Desert or whatnot. Um, or in Sal de Uyuni, there's this weird phenomenon going on, which is all these pins floating, gigantic pins floating, and blah, blah, blah. So that's kind of like what I was going for initially. But then I also realized like it could be, you know, interpreted as all these pins that are about to drop on this poor <laughs> defenseless soul who just happens to just be hanging out in the desert. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't really know how to interpret <laughs> what was going on in my head. All I know is that I really just wanted to put people in the illustration simply just because of the narrative aspect of it, you know. 
And that's always been me. That's always been my thing. Uh, I'm not much for landscapes. In fact, <laughs> I don't really think you've seen me do a landscape without putting a person in there, you know, just because, uh, yeah, <laughs> the story. But yeah, anyways, enough about the story and how to interpret this story. <laughs> so yeah, I, I wrote an article in my website about how people shouldn't really read too much into art because half the time, you know, like especially with me, when I draw something or, you know, when I do my illustrations, half the time I don't have an active thought about the kind of meaning that I'm trying to impart with that drawing. Half the time I'm just drawing something just because it simply looks cool, <laughs> which in this case, this scene just looks really cool because it's very surreal, you know? I mean, you're not going to find gigantic pins floating out in the desert <laughs> to go, ooh, ah, ah, like you just, you just won't, you know? So it's an immensely surreal scene, which is really cool. And so, yeah, um, for me, I'm not actively looking for an explanation or for a deeper meaning into my artwork. Half the time, I'm just like, dude, I'm just drawing something that looks cool and <laughs> this looks cool. So yeah, but anyways, um. My whole point in going into that whole spill is is because of prompts and how this particular prompt was so hard, was so hard to think of an idea of how to illustrate that when I finally did decide to just, you know, just go gung ho, I'm just like, I'm just going to draw pins dropping. And then when I started sketching them out and I started putting all these people in because I wanted a narrative to the illustration all of a sudden it just became like this really absolutely cool looking surreal painting you know and so i just kind of love how everything just kind of just came about with this particular illustration and whatnot and how everything kind of fell into place so yeah just so this is part of the reason why i wanted to make a a video out of it <laughs> out of all those pain paints that I have because it was just it was just really cool how all of this just kind of just you know fell together nicely so yeah but um now that I've talked in that about some of the ideas and some of my thought patterns when I was you know doing this particular piece I guess we can go back again and talk about the process notes you know so in the process <laughs> or what I'm doing right now. Basically, you just you guys just saw me got done doing the sketch. And then after I did the sketch, I do my crazy coloring face. That is, you know, my my standard habit of just coloring where I just kind of just throw random colors in there. Um, and again, I mentioned this quite a few times before, uh, like my coloring process are kind of like in the flux right now because some people have noted it to be quite too messy and sometimes I do get really bad results in this mess but sometimes I get really awesome results uh, in this particular case like when I did this particular illustration I think my color mixes on this particular one came out okay like it's it's very nice and very well fairly balanced compared to some of my other experimental color design um but yeah um i could go on and on about this but i'm not going to um but anyways after i did my quick coloring um what i typically do is like merge everything into one layer and then do this whole smudging thing which is what i'm doing right now i'm smudging everything and the whole point of the smudging is so that you i could get some form of blending in between the colors you know uh, kind of make it look like um, I have painted it basically like hand painted or whatnot and it looks like pastel basically the whole process kind of like pastel um, where I basically kind of smudge everything around like pastel um, and then um, yeah I smudge everything just so that I could get a base paint essentially basically my whole process is to get into a base paint one layer that I could do my details on and 
basically this is what I'm doing. I'm photo bashing, putting in some colors, throwing in some colors. And then as soon as I have all of this down, I just merge them all in one layer, smushing some around so I could get a base paint. And then once I get a base paint, that's when I start my illustration process or my detailing process. So yeah, that's what you guys will be watching in the next few minutes. So as you can see, I've basically started my detailing process already. Um, but before I did, um, I did some few minor edits to the brightness um, 
of the base paint because the base paint kind of looked like it was too gray and too dark so i basically went back and you know put in some uh a few color dodges here and there um at a very low opacity setting because color dodge it you know when you use color dodge it gets bright real fast real quick so you have to be careful about using it but yeah i basically color dodge like a few areas in the painting just to make it a little bit brighter um and then once i have that um that's when i started my detailing process which my detailing process is pretty much rinse and repeat all the way throughout the illustration and all the way throughout the painting which is I basically delineate my edges which you see me delineate my edges right now and what it is is basically just making my edges sharper so that the shape reads a little better because when you smudge things around it kind of makes things a little fuzzy and so the whole point is to just kind of sharpen things so that the shape reads easier and better and people can tell like what's going on with the scene so in this case right now i'm delineating the pins that's all like falling just making things a little bit sharper and whatnot um and i'm also doing that in the background um typically i don't sharpen the edges in the background as much because the whole point is the background basically just really needs to be fuzzy um because you don't want to sharpen edges in your background because then that would just compete in the foreground um in the case of the pins even though they're kind of like in the back and really in the background since they're such a huge part of the illustration and pretty much big i pretty much have no choice but to sharpen all of them essentially um although in hindsight i don't really think i yeah i did never mind i, I was gonna say i didn't um detail the back pins as much but i think I, I do believe that i did so yeah anyways um so now that i'm pretty much in the foreground i'm pretty much you know just delineating my edges like i said making my shapes read better and i'm also accentuate the shadow so if some shadows needed some accentuating or if some shadows just need to get a little bit darker i, I would basically just go back with a much darker brush or I do multiply sometimes um, and then I also add highlights for highlights I never ever use color dodge or screen or any of those um, layer blending modes uh, I pretty much just hand paint it in um, just because it feels better that way or it looks better that way typically what I do is if I do a color dodge I typically save it to the very very end once I added my highlights already uh, in this case i don't ever really think i went back with a color dodge from what i remember so yeah but anyways yeah that's pretty much my detailing process rinse and repeat all the way throughout the illustration just kind of work on a few areas here and there um i'm always conscious about time too because obviously it's a speed paint and i wanted to keep it as a speed paint where i don't work too too much on the details you know um so yeah if i'm developing this piece um then yeah i would obviously spend a lot more time than what i'm doing right now but for now i'm just doing like a speed paint just kind of going over these details as quickly as i could so yeah and as usual my figures are always simple and my speed paints they're typically just a silhouette which is pretty much just what ended up happening in this particular case i just kept my guys as a silhouette for the most part so yeah but anyways yeah uh, fairly easy speed paint to do um i really like it i really love the result um it's not super saturated which i've been accused of being too saturated with my colors with this particular one it's it's a nice blend of saturation and desaturation although in hindsight actually it's not very saturated actually like just looking at the lower right area it seems like the sky is really only about the saturated part except for some areas in the ground so but yeah it's a nicely balanced photo you know which is really what you want to try and achieve whenever you're doing an illustration it's just to make all this competing ideas and competing uh thing like saturation and values and whatnot you're basically just trying to balance everything just to make it look right which is what i'm doing um so yeah but anyways 
really awesome idea for this one. I was clueless as to what to do and then I just started drawing and lo and behold I came up with this very surreal painting. And so I just love how that kind of worked out for me, you know, versus initially when I just didn't have an idea, you know. But yeah, that's it. That's the end of the illustration. Thank you guys for watching it with me and I will see you guys in the next video. Good night. Thank you.